What's up guys, it's your boy The Hunter Fisher. Welcome back to the Epi Banger video. And today guys and girls, we're reviewing the Dan Coon glass fin. Let's get into it. It was just crazy. Oh, there's one. There's just something about a cow cutter that just... Ooh, that's not a bad one either. I would say that this is just a lot more fun to fish with, I will say for sure. All right guys, I hope you guys are excited, but I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on this Dan Coon class fin. So this rod's had like a lot of speculation. I've heard a lot of people asking questions about it because essentially it's a glass rod for a decently budget price. I believe it retails around 140 bucks or so. And um, so far I've been using it for about two to three months. And I gotta say, it's actually not too bad. I'm not gonna tell you guys all at once. I'm actually gonna tell you as I'm fishing with it today because I got a few hours just to get out and fish with one of my buddies, Augie, over here. And we're going to see how it performs. I'm going to talk about what lures I like to use on it, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. If you guys want to check it out, there will be a link to Dan Coon down in the description below. If you have any questions about it, I'll answer them in the comments. But let's get on with the video. All right, guys, what's up? We are currently at the second spot of the day. We had to, like, literally, I walked into my spot and it was completely grassed out, matted out. So what we're going to do is I'm here at the second spot. My buddy's pulling up right now. But I'm just going to give you guys just a overall opinion really quick of this rod just to give you guys my first initial thoughts on it. So just to give you guys some specs on this rod too, um, it is, it's four foot seven. It's rated for one to five grams. I'm going to test that out today, actually, fully. It, the line class is two to five pound. It's rated at an ultralight power. And it's, I believe it's a three-piece rod. So and it actually comes in a little cloth bag. I don't really show it on video because I never use the cloth bag to be honest with you. If you guys are looking for a rod to take on your next like trawl fishing trip, it doesn't seem like a too bad of an option. There's not really a whole lot of glass rod options that are relatively well priced available in the United States. So, but this is actually available to ship to the United States. So that's pretty cool about it so far. I've actually been using mainly braid with this setup so far, just because I prefer the sense of braid and stuff. I'm actually not even using it for freshwater trout right now because there is none in my area. I'm from Florida, so it's a little bit different situation, but I use it a lot for brim and panfish. I just paint because it feels so great. There's a lot of backbone in it, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and fish and you guys can tell me your thoughts as you guys watch. So let's get on the water. It is so funny, I was, I'm using this reel for bluegill now and I was just catching barramundi on it like last week. All right, let's see what's gonna bite today. Water doesn't look too dirty, which is good. And let this sink to the bottom and slow roll, I guarantee you. Ooh, mosquitoes, I feel them. Looking for a bite, looking for a bite. Guys, we are currently using a 124th ounce jig head from Moondog Bait Company, plus a two inch B vibe from Euro Tackle. And uh, it's casting pretty good. I think this weighs about two grams, maybe, which is kind of the sweet spot of this rod. Two to four grams is my favorite lures to use so far. There you go. Yeah. Augie got first blood, got a bass. I knew that this stuff would catch. Yeah, I'm just letting it sink some. Because they like to pick it up on the fall. I've just been trying everything, man. Hmm, this is casting a 32nd pretty well. Guys, we are currently casting around a 132nd ounce jig from Euro Tackle. Should be about a gram and a half with plastic. It's pretty good. It's overbraked because I wasn't paying attention to my cast, but. It's pretty easy to cast a 30 seconds, especially because the way that the rod loads up with it being glass and whatnot makes it easier to cast these lighter stuff pretty well. So yeah. Like, you know how ice fishing people do? Yeah. It's interesting. I am freaking slinging this 132nd ounce jig right now. All right, I'm gonna take one last cast. Guys, I think I didn't record it earlier, but I'm using this Calcutta Conquest BFS 23. This is a one and a half gram uh, jig and paddle tail from your tackle. Just to give you guys a cast idea. That was kind of an overhead cast too. It was pretty easy to load that up. And to be honest, I got my brakes really high right now just because I'm trying to have stress-free fishing. But yeah, that's how it casts a one gram jig. So the one to five gram rating is pretty accurate. Does not feel bad at all. All right, guys, so in the beginning of the video, I said uh, benefits and negatives about this rod. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick negative. Um, upon an initial, like, when I first got this rod, the real seat wasn't like my favorite thing because it feels plasticky and almost fake, which I believe it is technically fake wood. I'm not sure for sure or not, but it, it just kind of struck me as cheap uh, at first. But it's not really, it doesn't get hot in this, in this Florida heat. So I'm assuming it won't get cold and where people are trout fishing and stuff like that. So. It's one of the things I, you know, 
you could change, take it or leave it type of thing. I also really wish there was a hook keeper of some sort because you notice there's a segment here, but right here you would think there'd be a hook keeper and I don't know why they didn't put one whenever this is a whole piece itself. So I don't know, just thought I'd point that out because I feel like personally I would prefer to have a hook keeper instead of putting it on the guide legs or on my reel. So yeah, it's up to whoever, whose personal decision it is. Guys, a couple weeks ago, right here, dude, I was just slaying it on a Gancraft Jointed Claw 70. It was just crazy. Oh, there's one. Little bluegill. Heck yeah, guys. First fish of the day. Little baby bluegill right there on the one and a half gram jig and swim bait combo. Sweet. All right. We got a little more distance in that cast. Maybe we'll see a little bit bigger fish out there. He hit that on the freaking run, too. Oh. Can't really hook set on this rod, but that's because that's kind of the point. You're supposed to be fishing it with more of treble hook baits. So that's, I'm not really able to hook set. So if you're trying to hook set on this rod, I warn, I warn you don't because glass rods aren't meant to do that. But I love fishing a jig on a glass rod just simply because it's a lot more fun um, for me at least. I just like have, I like fishing with a, this glass rod because it's a little more fun sometimes than say a conventional graphite rod that gives me more backbone. While this is really strong and more durable, I would say that this is just a lot more fun to fish with, I will say for sure. This reel is so much fun to fish with, dude. The drag is also very loud. Well, it's louder whenever it's stronger, but yeah. There's just something about a Calcutta that just, oh, that's not a bad one either. See the size of him? Good. That's not a bad bass on the Dan Coon glass fin rod right now. Holy crap. Good lord. <laughs> he ain't a bad size fish at all. <laughs> oh, my freaking sneakers just broke. There we go. Sick. <laughs> all right, guys. What we caught that on was this little um, EPF swim right here. Uh, and gold and a pink your attack a 132nd ounce size four or size six hook jig head but what we're going to do is we're actually going to tie on something a little bit different just for fun and see how well it does it's going to be a three and a half gram lure so it's going to be a little bit heavy so we're going to test the higher end of the rod and see how it does look at the, the action now see that if you work it slow just, work, just twitch it I am. <laughs> this rod does feel a little overpowered with this lure. I will say. Like it just bends a little too much under it, but I think that's fine. Because it's kind of like this is on the higher end of the rod anyways. We're using like two and a half gram, three and a half gram minnows with this rod really. Or like one to two gram spoons. That's really good for it feels like. If I had a spoon right now, that was like one sixteenth ounce, dude. What's nice about this rod low-key though is the ability to like backhand cast and take my time to like accurately cast where I want to with just a light flick. That's kind of like the whole point of this rod is to be able to lightly cast it essentially to give you guys an idea. This is a small cut I got to cast in so we're just gonna oh well that was a horrible cast for me because now I'm stuck on grass or not anymore but y'all got the point. Um, it's just a little bit easier to accurately cast with heavier lures like this and you don't even have to put any effort into it because the rod is bending so much to give you that loaded up casting ability so that's kind of the whole point of it being a flick casting rod is supposed to bend up the rod and get a little bit more accurately casted because it's like think about it like a spring you want to look at the rod as a spring and essentially the whole point is to well not throw in a bush but you guys get the point <laughs> i'll show you guys real quick just again I barely have to move my wrist there. I roll cast essentially like this. And that's what the whole point of this rod is to be, is to just roll cast into those tight cuts. And, that, and that's what really makes this rod a fun rod to fish with. I take it to the public park that's near my house sometimes. And it's just fun to go catch some bluegill on this rod on like a rooster tail, because essentially I can essentially duck in and out of trees and I don't have to worry about, you know, if my rods can get stuck in the tree above me or anything, because this thing's only four foot seven. And it's nice to load up because it's a fiberglass rod. This thing's working a glide bait pretty well too, but I'm probably up to the glide bait away because 
it ain't getting bit like it was a couple weeks ago. But I've been wanting to catch more fish on this thing because it's really fun glide bait to fish. If you guys can see it in the water, the action is just insane. See, that's super easy to like underhand cast. Like literally, I don't have to reach behind me to cast it. And that's kind of the fun part about this rod. Guys, currently we're fishing the Duo Tetra Works po Poco Poco, it's two grams. It casts pretty well on this little rod. And honestly, this rod has like a good progressive fast action to it. So it's actually relatively easier to work this popper than I thought originally when I first started casting it around. So, I mean, you can even cast things like topwaters on this rod and still have like relatively good control on the action. Like I'm able to walk it like this, like a spook style bait. Like I'm able to walk the dog with it and still like relatively have good action on it. But right now I'm using straight braid, which don't ever do that guys. Cause uh, that's stupid. Don't do what I do. But I didn't feel like tying up a leader. Like guys, just like working it right here. I can walk the dog like no problem. Oh, apparently walking the dogs what they wanted. Dude, what is it with me catching like decent fish? Is that the same freaking bass? Oh, I should have brought up freaking pliers. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting guys. Well, on the Poco Poco, there we go guys. Let me take a picture of that. All right, guys, I'm going to try to figure out how to unhook this fish, but, well, apparently the rod is pretty good with top water treble hook baits. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know more about it after this. All right, guys, um, just to talk on camera real quick, but as I was talking on camera about how well it was actually working in the water, like this little Poco Poco with two gram lure, to be honest, dude, the sweet spot for this rod feels like two to three grams. Like if you're throwing two to three grams, like even three and a half gram minnows, you're in the sweet spot because like this rod's very capable in handling the casting of it and the action of it. So that's kind of like what I've liked so far about this rod. Guys, my shoe is falling apart right here. These shoes are so old, but, uh, my point is this rod's actually a lot of fun to fish with because it's glass is the fact that like I'm surprised at how well it's able to actually handle these fish but it's a lot more fun to fish with because it is glass because it's bending so much so you have to like essentially horse it in a little bit differently. This rod's a lot of fun if you're looking to have a lot more fun with BFS which is the whole reason why I fish BFS it's great for that. What's crazy is they bit this like this fast but for some reason didn't bite the glide bait that's kind of weird. I guess they were wanting top water or something but let's see how well it flip casts. Two gram flick casting, not bad at all. So that's pretty sweet. So far, I'm really liking the rod. I'm gonna say thank you, Dan Coon, for sending it to me to review. It's taking me a while to actually review on my channel just because I had a lot of things stacked up and to do. So it took me a while to actually get the review out on this rod just because I was taking my time with it. So I also really wanted to find what I liked about it and truly what my opinion is on it. So if you're the one to, if you're somebody who's fishing for trout and you're looking for a glass rod versus a, a graphite rod or even a progressive rod, it's a fun rod to fish with. If you're looking for something like that's more of like a hybrid, there's options out there, but this one's a little bit different for sure. Not really a, I mean, it's not really a bottom contact rod, but me personally, I use it for more like jigs and stuff like that too, because personally, I think it's a lot of fun. But my absolute favorite way to fish on this rod is a beetle spin, dude. A beetle spin is the most fun on this rod because it just catches so many fish, at least in my area. And it's just so consistent to fish on and a lot of fun to fish with. So if you want to fit, like find a rod that like really <laughs> tosses a beetle spin for fun, this is it. But not a lot of people still fish the beetle spin these days. I mean, you do if you're like 60 or 70 years old, but <laughs> most people don't my age. Once again, y'all, this is the end of the video and uh, I'm editing it right now. And I realized I never filmed an intro while I was out fishing that day. That was the video review for the Dan Coon glass spin, trout flick casting, whatever kind of rod you want to call it. I also want to apologize in the beginning of the video. My mic was rickety. I didn't realize, but it had broken during that video. And I didn't realize until the next time I wanted to go record a video and my little mic up here had actually fallen off. <laughs> so I didn't pay attention to it, but now we fixed those problems and the quality is going to be a little bit better, which as you guys can I'm not sure if you can tell but I've actually been slowly working on increasing the quality production level whatever you want to call it of my personal YouTube videos because I feel that I don't know this is kind of 
I've been in a slump ever since last year when I originally lost my job working for Salt Strong. I've been working on getting things back together again. So been finding a new passion for the social media thing and just getting on top of the horse again. And uh, yeah, I definitely feel like things have turned around since then, especially with iCast. The amount of content I was focused on filming was crazy. So I have so much more content to film, but we're gonna be changing up the channel a little bit, uh, just focusing more on fishing, less about the gear aspect side of things, because yeah, I'm gonna keep talking about gear in my videos. Of course, I'm gonna do that because that's kind of like what my channel is, is just reviewing bait finesse gear and stuff like that. But I wanna make it more about bait finesse fishing. I feel like that's something that a lot of YouTubers are too busy ignoring right now. I mean, you have a lot of the bait finesse YouTube channels right now who don't do real fishing. Uh, they don't do enough fishing. They do too much talking, not enough fishing. So really, how can they get a good review if you're not out there on the water catching fish? A lot of them are worried about this feature, that feature, but really what we need to be focused on is are you catching fish and are you having fun on those gear? And that's kind of something that I'm going to be talking about a whole lot more on my channel. As you guys can tell with the video that I just filmed and y'all are watching now, I focused on how fun is this Dan Coon glass rod? How fun is it to fish with? And to be honest, it's a ton of fun. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a glass rod. There's nothing more classic than a fiberglass rod and the bend that comes with it. And uh, I've actually built one myself ever since, but I broke it, uh, but I'm learning it. But I definitely am inspired by this rod some furthermore. But I just want to say shout out to Dan Coon for sending me the rod to review. This is not a paid uh, sponsorship type of video. They said, hey, uh, would you like to make a video with our rod? And I said, sure. I I've been curious about the rod for some time. I've done some trout fishing. And when me and my wife are probably going to do like an anniversary, trip to go up to Blue Ridge again. I think we might go do some more trout fishing. I might bring that rod along with me. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please let me know down in the comment section below. Like and subscribe with the bell notifications turned on. If you guys want to go pick up this rod, I'll leave a link down in the description down below. And if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And as always, guys, God bless and remember. Yeah, the